Is this where people typically stand right here? Yep. Okay, perfect. perfect. It's nice to have a pulpit to hide behind. I was hoping you would ask me to walk up here and do it. <laughs> well, hello to all of you. It's a, a blessing to be here tonight and to all of the moms who are with us tonight. I'd like to wish you a happy Mother's Day. I know it's a day early, but uh, happy Mother's Day to every, all of the mothers here tonight. Uh, I'm gonna, the text tonight is 1 Samuel chapter 24. So if you have a Bible handy, if you'd grab the Bible and open it up with me, we'll go through this together. 1 Samuel chapter 24. And when I was trying to figure out what text to preach on tonight, I was praying about it. And the Lord kept leading me to this passage. And I kept saying, Lord, that's a weird passage. Why do you want me to preach on that? And uh, I don't know, but we're going to find out. Uh, when I prepare sermons, uh, the, the way that I do it, there are different ways of doing it, but I don't typically write out a sermon. I, I typically study the text and pray, and then when I get into the pulpit, whatever comes out, comes out. So I like to leave a lot of room for the Holy Spirit. So we'll see what the Lord has to say to us tonight, but I know there's, there's got to be something in this text that the Lord wants to speak into our hearts. So... When we're all here, we'll, uh, I'll just ask you to bow your heads with me again. We'll pray together and just ask for the Lord's blessing on this message. Let's pray together. Father God, we come into your presence now, Lord, just so very grateful, Lord, uh, for bringing us together tonight, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the freedom that we have in this nation to gather like this and worship you and praise you, Lord, and just lift up praise to your holy name. And Lord, as we get into your text together, the, your word together tonight, and we go through this text, I pray, Father, that, that nobody here will hear from me, but that each and every one of us, including myself, Lord, will hear directly from you. I pray, Lord, that you will take your word and you will just make it alive to our hearts, that each and every one of us, Lord, will hear from you and you alone. Father, we pray this together in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're in Daniel, I'm sorry, not Daniel, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 24, and what I'm going to do is just go through this together, we're just going to go verse by verse through this, and I've got, what, about 15 minutes, John? 15, 20 minutes, usually? All right, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to that. <laughs> so 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1 says this, it says, now when Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, saying, behold... David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Now, what we have to understand about this passage of Scripture is that at this point in history, David has been anointed to become the future king of Israel. And he knows that that is the calling that's on his life. God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David. But at this point in time, Saul is still the acting king, the reigning king in Israel. So at w what's going on here, just to give you the context of the passage, is Saul is looking for David and he wants to kill him. He's jealous of David and he wants to eliminate David and just take him out of the way. And so David is on the run. At this point in time, he has about 600 men who are with him and they're hiding in caves. And Saul now is going and searching for David. It says in verse 2, Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of the rocks of the wild goats. So Saul takes 3,000 of the, the choice soldiers in Israel. We would think of them as like special forces soldiers, right? If we think of Green Berets or Navy SEALs, these are the best of the best. And he takes 3,000 of these men, and he goes out and he's looking for David and his 600 men. And it says here in verse 3, he came to the sheepfolds on the way where there was a cave. And Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the inner recesses of the cave. Now this is no coincidence. <laughs> there are no coincidences in life. God is on the throne and he orchestrates all things. And so as, as Saul and his men are passing by this cave, the urge comes upon him that he needs to go in and spend some time by himself in this cave. And the only time that King Saul would ever be alone would be in a situation like this. He has these 3,000 choice soldiers all around him. He ha he's surrounded by personal bodyguards. But the one time that he would be alone is when he has to go and do this. So he goes into the cave to relieve himself. And David and his 600 men are in the cave. It's a very large cave. And it says that they're in the recesses of the cave. So David and his men are already in the cave. And, you know, if you think about what it's like if you go into a dark room or a dark place like a cave, your eyes have to adjust to the darkness. 
But at the opening of the cave, there's light. And so Saul's coming in at the opening of the cave, and David and his men are inside the cave, and they look out. And remember, they're hiding from Saul, and they're hiding from all of his soldiers who are trying to kill, him, kill David and his men. And in walks Saul all by himself. And David is the man who has been anointed to be the future king of Israel. And the reason that him and, and, and his men, that he and his men are hiding in this cave is because they're hiding from Saul. And then they see Saul walk in all by himself. He's a perfect target. To them, it looks like this is something that God is doing. Like God is just delivering Saul right into their hands. And it says here in verse 4, The men David said to him, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I am about to give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. So what his men are saying to David is, Look, David, this is, this is what God spoke to you about. This is the moment when you are to become king. God is handing Saul over to you. And of course they would think that because of the situation. What are the odds that Saul would walk in by himself into the one cave where David and all of his men are hiding? So they look and they say, wait a minute, this is something God is doing. This is of the Lord. And they're trying to convince David of this. And it says here in the second part of verse 4, then David arose, oh, I'm sorry, back up a little bit, uh, it, back up to the beginning of verse 4. Then the men of David said to him, Behold, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I, I am about to give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David arose and cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly. So David and his men are hiding in the recesses of the cave. Saul walks in by himself. He takes his robe off. He goes to do what he needs to do by himself. And David sneaks up, and all of his men are probably thinking, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. David is going to go, and he's going to assassinate Saul. He's going to kill him. And, but as David is moving towards Saul, he's thinking about the situation. Now he has this whole crowd of men, soldiers who are relying on him, 600 of them, for, you know, for, for, for their livelihood. They're, they're, they're following David. He's leading them. They're living off their land. They're taking what they can. They're hiding in caves. And they're saying to him, this is of the Lord. Go and do this right now. And they're pushing him to do it. And they're waiting now just for David to come back and say to them, I've done it. Saul is dead and I am king. Because if David does this, then all of them can leave the cave. David is the new king of Israel because he's been anointed by God. And they don't need to live in caves anymore. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for them. And so David arose, it says, and he cut off the edge of Saul's robe secretly. It came about afterward, in verse 5, that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. So he said to his men, Far be it from me, because of the Lord, that I should do this thing to my Lord the Lord's anointed. He's talking about King Saul. He's saying that Saul is the Lord's anointed. And he said, far be it from me that I should do this thing to the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, since he is the Lord's anointed. You see, David understood that if he had taken the life of Saul in this moment, then he would be committing murder. And he didn't want to break God's commandments. So even though all of his men were saying to him, go and kill Saul, God wants you to do this, listen to them he listened to God and this is one of the hardest things that we can do as Christians it's a difficult thing to listen to the Lord I struggle with this all the time I've struggled with this my whole life as I've walked with the Lord how do we know when the Lord is speaking to us and all of these people around David are saying this is the Lord God speaking to you he's showing you something here you need to kill Saul how did David know that that was not of the Lord because he knew the word of God. He knew the commandments of God and he did not want to break them. So whenever we find ourselves in a situation where our faith is being tested and, and we, we are stepping out, seeking God's will, we need to ask ourselves, what does the word of God say? And that is something that David must have done in his heart and in his mind as he was moving towards Saul, prepared possibly to kill him but instead, he just cut off a piece of Saul's robe. In verse 7, it says, 
David persuaded his men with these words and did not allow them to rise up against Saul. And Saul arose, left the cave, and went on his way. So David comes back to his men. No doubt they're all expecting him to say, I did it. <laughs> you know, Saul is dead. I'm the king. We can leave the cave. Instead, he comes back and he shows them a piece of robe that he's cut off and says, no, I didn't kill him. And, 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 and he says here that he had to persuade them of this. So obviously his men were, were confronting him over this and saying, well, what are you thinking? Why didn't you kill Saul? But, Saul, but David was able to persuade them by reminding them, no doubt, of the word of God, what the word of God says. He could say to them, I didn't kill Saul because he is the Lord's anointed. And killing him would be murder. And David didn't want to do that. And so he let him live, and he persuaded his men also not to go and kill Saul. And it says here in verse 8, Now afterward... David arose. Now, after this conversation with his men, after he convinced them not to kill Saul, afterward, David arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul. You can imagine what his men must have been thinking in this moment, because now he's going out and letting Saul know that they're hiding in the cave. There are 3,000 choice soldiers outside with Saul. David's inside with his 600 men, and he could have just let Saul leave and, and run right away. He goes out and he calls after Saul, giving up their location and letting them know that he and his men are in the cave. It says David in verse 8, David arose uh, and went out of the cave and called after Saul, saying, My Lord the King. And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and prostrated himself. Now it's so interesting, you know, when I read this, I think about the fact that we have two men who have been anointed king of Israel anointed by God, but they have two different, very, very different perspectives regarding what that means. Saul is looking to stand in his own strength, walk in his own power. He's looking to take the life of David. But here's David, and he had an opportunity to kill Saul, and he didn't do it. And no doubt, this is a, a moment that God was using to test David and to help prepare him to become king. He had an opportunity here to either walk in faith, follow the Lord, or to stand in his own strength. And he chose to walk in faith and follow the Lord. And so it says here in verse 9, David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men, saying, Behold, David seeks to harm you? Behold, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord had given you today into my hand in the cave, and some said to kill you, but my eye had pity on you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Now my father, see, he's, he's, he's referring to, to Saul as his father. It's a, it's a sign of respect because Saul is the current king. Now my father, see, indeed, see the edge of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the edge of your robe and did not kill you. No one perceived that there is no evil or rebellion in my hands, and I have not sinned against you, though you are lying in wait for my life to take it. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. Now what David is saying here, and this is so interesting to me, because this is, this is really something that David said earlier when he went against Goliath. Remember when David went out against Goliath and he said, the battle is the Lord's. Well, this is how David is living his life. And that's really what he's saying to Saul in this moment. He says, may the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. He's saying, I'm walking in faith in God. I know that I've been anointed king, but it's not yet my time. May the Lord avenge me, but I'm not going to, to, take, to raise my hand against you. He's saying, the battle is the Lord's. And this is just such an important thing for us to remember as Christians. It's, it's just something that we need to constantly be reminded of. As we go through life and we face trials, the battle is the Lord's. God is in charge. God is the one who we worship, and God is the one who must lead us through this life. He continues here, and he says this in verse 13, As the proverb of the ancient says, Out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? 
Whom are you pursuing? A dead dog? A single flea? He's talking about himself. He's saying, I'm nothing compared to you. You don't need to come and seek me out to kill me. He says in verse 15 here, The Lord therefore be judge and decide between you and me, and may he see and plead my cause and deliver me from your hand. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Now these are the words of a man who was just seeking to take David's life. But look how convicted he is when David responds in love, when he responds by, by showing his faith in God. Saul re responds here and, and, and he says, My son David. Then Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He was convicted. He was convicted because David responded to him with love. And continuing here, it says, in verse 17, he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have dealt well with me, while I have dealt wickedly with you. You have declared today that you have done good to me, that the Lord delivered me into your hand, and yet you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away safely? May the Lord therefore reward you with good in return for what you have done to me this day. Now, if you think about how this day probably started for David and for Saul, David's hiding in a cave. Saul's with these 3,000 soldiers seeking out David to take his life. But then something happens. And what happens is David surrenders his will to God's will. And the Lord uses that to bless. And that's what's happening here. He's blessing David. And he's blessing Saul. Saul's life was not taken in that cave. And David's life was spared. And it turns out that through this conversation, Saul's weeping. Because he sees the love of God coming through David. Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to be able to take the word of God like this and, and apply it to our lives. This is a lesson that I need to hear tonight. We all need to hear this lesson. That, that we are to submit our will to the will of God. And let the grace of God pour out upon us and upon those who we interact with because that is what we are called to do as believers, praise God. We can stand in the grace of God because we are covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise God. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the way you can take this ancient text, Lord, and, and use it to speak to our hearts. Father, I pray that as we continue here tonight, Lord, that your blessing will continue to pour out upon us, Lord, that we will continue to stand in the grace of God as we lift up praise to you. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. stand together as we sing.
still at home, we're all grown up. Moms who outlived a son or daughter. Or moms of babies they never got to meet. Moms who raised kids all on their own. Or became a mom to someone who needed one. Moms of children who have wandered from God. Or the longing to be moms who are still awake. Joan has put together some beautiful uh, little journals. Journals, yes, with a scripture oh. and a pen. There you go, with a scripture and a pen. And as you leave on the back door, there's a table. Uh, we'd love to have you take one of those. Uh, Mary is not here, as we know, uh, but she would definitely say, I'd like to make an announcement before everyone leaves, which is uh, on the Memorial Day program that we're doing on the, tw on the 25th. Um, she would love to have folks sign up to bring a dessert. So if we could do, this is really echoey, huh? You're not close enough. Well, it worked fine for Pastor Jared. Wow. I'm not a... <laughs> um, so anyway, we'd love to have you sign up. And right in the middle there, uh, there's a table with, that, with uh, the sign-up sheet. And also um, on that table, uh, there are some DVDs that I have been remiss in getting produced. Um, I think I've been telling everyone for the last... Well, three, four, five years. Uh, if you all remember the community choir event that we did back at CCOA and what a wonderful night of worship that was. So I was coming home from the Berkshires with the organ and listening to it again. And it is such a worship experience. And I'm like, I keep telling people about this. And so I need to make, I mean, I just stream it right from our, it's on our YouTube channel. So I did make some DVDs, finally. So there are some DVDs out back. And there's, Sam was, I don't know, 11 or 12, and you can, you know, the doors opening and closing, and we were up at the summer church. So we had gathered back again at the uh, church relocation. We weren't even fully set up, um, but yet it was such an incredible night. Uh, so I just want, I want to have you folks be able to share in that as well. So there are some DVDs. I'll also make some audios, too, uh, because if you like to sing... It is well with my soul, and how great thou art, and that majesty and glory of your name. The, the amount of songs and worship, and it's about an hour and 20 minutes, I think. Um, and you'll enjoy it. Uh, so feel free to take one. If, you, if, if they're out, let me know, and I'll get you some more. Uh, we'll have them next week. Um, I think that was all we had for announcements. And if you, if you would like to have a loved one on the announcement slides we had running, um, we're going to have a time during the 25th. Uh, for the Memorial Day service that we're going to recognize. Um, if you have a loved one um, who was in the military, who has passed away, that's what Memorial Day is all about, to recognize them and their service. Uh, we will be happy to put that picture on the screen with their name and any information you want to give us. That will be part of our service. I'm still kind of putting it together in my head, but it's going to be part of that. So uh, feel free to get that to me or get a hold of me to find out how to get it. So I think we've covered it all. Um, so again, thank you, folks. Uh, for coming and thank you so much to Pastor Jared um, for bringing us the good word tonight and uh, we would just bless you as you go home and safe journeys and thank you and we hope to see you again next time. <laughs>